Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sri, and today I'm joined by uh, Rowan Fernando Pele, who is a student at QUT, a computer science student. And how this conversation came about was that uh, last week I had run a very impromptu, straightforward giveaway, and Rowan ended up uh, winning this, uh, you know, giveaway to celebrate five years of Mustard Seed IT. And then as we were exchanging email addresses and so on and having a conversation, um, this idea popped into my head that, hey, wait a minute, uh, I'm going to continue working in a sessional capacity at QUT. Semester is about to start. And then I uh, asked Rowan if he would be happy to have this conversation where I could ask him some very pointed questions and he could share his thoughts, which I believe would be helpful for not only educators at QUT, but educators everywhere that I feel like you know, we need that assistance. We need that input from the student perspective. Surveys are great, don't get me wrong, but I always prefer face-to-face -face, uh, communication like this. So today I've got a few questions prepared for Rowan, which I've shared with him beforehand. And uh, let's see where this goes. So good morning, Rowan, and thank you again for agreeing to this and being here. Yeah, morning, actually. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to see how this goes. Yeah, yeah, same here. Okay. So let's get right into it. Um, as I uh, you know, thought about the questions, I didn't want to make it all about the pandemic, but whether we like it or not, we're still in the middle of it. We're still dealing with it. And you as a student and uh, you know, educators, businessmen, everyone's dealing with this, yeah? So here's my first question to you. What was most challenging about the pandemic, about COVID? Okay, so yeah, I would say uh, the sudden shift from, uh, you know, the online to, in, I mean, in-person to online classes was yeah. quite challenging at first as I had never sort of experienced something like that before. Mm. And uh, yeah, but I think QUT's resources were pretty straightforward on how to go about certain things. So I was able to adapt to it within a few days. But in addition to that, I think uh, something all of us can relate to is uh, procrastination that came out of working at home mm. because I mean, definitely didn't help during assignment periods. <laughs> yeah, but I also, get, I get a for that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's a mutual, it's a mutual feeling. <laughs> True. Okay. So that's from the student perspective, but you know what? You're not just a student, you're a person as well. Yeah. So how was the, so from the student perspective you've shared, and that's uh, very true, but how did that affect you as a person, you know, as an individual, you know, you're not just a student all the time, you're a person too. So how did that COVID, um, you know, uh, impact you as a person? Uh, as a person, okay. I think, I mean, luckily I didn't really have any, you know, mental health issues. I think a lot of people suffered mm. from that, especially last year during the whole lockdown. I think yeah. being an uh, ambivert, I'm uh, sort of more inclined to be introverted. So I think that side of me was uh, pretty used to that uh, scenario of being like yeah. in a lockdown. But yeah, as a person, I mean, I don't think I really got affected by it because I even like did some workouts or something in my room and uh, kept myself physically fit and also mentally fit. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it didn't really affect me that much as okay. uh, it did from a lot of other people. Well, that, that's, that's great to hear. And so you said you did uh, physical workouts and you mentioned mentally fit. How did you manage to do that? Besides focusing on your studies and becoming a super student, how else did you manage to stay mentally fit? Uh, I think mentally fit, I think being physically fit almost translates to being mentally fit as well. Yeah. But uh, in addition to that, I think I'm a very creative person. So in addition to the university, you know, subject content, I also like uh, took up this course on video editing. Oh, on wow, YouTube. wonderful. Yeah, so I was able to keep myself occupied uh, by doing that. Excellent. And yeah, and also like making some videos uh, on YouTube and just keeping myself creative in that sense. That's excellent. That's that's great tip. So uh, physically fit translates to mentally fit. Couldn't agree more. 
and you kept yourself busy besides with, um, uh, you know, the university subject load, which as a student you have to deal with, but you also took that extra step of, you know, developing and taking on a hobby and building up your skills. That's brilliant. And I hope that those who are watching and listening are uh, taking notes. Question number two. Now this is more, you know, as, uh, as an educator and as a student. So what worked in terms of online teaching and learning? And of course, the converse to that is what didn't. So let me hear your thoughts on that. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, although I did say that, uh, uh, like I did procrastinate. So I think this is going to contradict what I just said. Uh, but it was at the same time pretty convenient for me, like having all my resources available to me mm. whenever I needed them was uh, a good thing. But I think uh, being an IT student, you're anyway using resources that are uh, close to you, like a, I don't know, computer, internet. Mm. So yeah, in terms of that, uh, I think that helped. But uh, in addition to that, I think this mostly, I think reflects to your previous question. Mm. Uh, I would have liked some units to be uh, taught uh, in person. Yeah. Especially there were some units that uh, would normally use hardware components for, for uh, before COVID time. And uh, yeah, I feel like uh, using uh, simulation software uh, was not the right way to go about it. And mm. uh, yeah, I was, was not excited sure. about that in my opinion. No, fair enough. Yeah. So when there's hands on, not everything can translate to online. How about student, student interaction? Do, did you miss that, you know, seeing fellow students and maybe the uh, educators face to face and having that face to face interaction? Did you think that Zoom or whatever online medium was used to deliver the content and lectures and tutorials? Did you find that, you know, this is good, not so good, horrible? What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely missed out on uh, the opportunity to meet a lot of new people because yeah. being an international student, uh, a first year international student last year, I kind of missed uh, that, you know, opportunity to get to know new people at uni. But also I was able to sort of turn that around by joining some clubs and like good programs, activities. So it was sure. not that bad, but knowing more people who are doing the same degree as I'm doing would have been much better. And in terms of Zoom, I think Zoom was a good pick, but I mean, I'm pretty sure you're familiar that uh, not a lot of people turn their cameras or <laughs> audio on during classes. So it's yeah. uh, kind of isolated. Yeah. But yeah, I would have uh, sort of liked uh, some sort of like interaction in the Zoom call. Sure. Okay. So look, you know, speaking just uh, particularly about that in some of the units I was involved in, we made it mandatory for students to have audio and video on, and that was translating into some level of participation marks in the unit. So in some of those units, we saw greater engagement as in people showing their faces and occasionally saying something. Um, and so with that, I'm going to then push into the third question. Uh, what would you want to share with educators? As in, if you had a wish list, and if say, you know, there's another mini lockdown, suddenly it comes up and says, oh, look, and we've had those recently in uh, Greater Brisbane, where, you know, uh, we've been told that, hey, for the next three days, you can't do this, you can't do that, maintain social distancing, only essential stuff. So taking all of this into perspective, last year, your personal challenges, your general observations, what would you want to share with your educators uh, to people like UT, maybe other people who are watching and listening, how can we as your educators um, do better? You know, sure, we're limited resources, money, there's limitations, but given the tools, given what you have, given what we have, what do you think we can do to make life a bit easier, say, for students like yourself? Uh, yeah, so I think during... Uh especially during the lockdown, I think people are uh, more sort of, you know, uh, kind of uh, isolated. Hmm. And uh, I, so as a result, I think uh, educators uh, 
something I would like to see educators be more is uh, enthusiastic when it comes to teaching so that they can engage the students better. Yeah. And uh, I think that's sort of a very essential skill to have and uh, especially during this online time. And it's definitely something I'm trying to develop myself uh, so that I can, uh, you know, engage an audience and like, connect with my audience. Sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, but yeah, when I think of uh, enthusiastic, I like to compare it to your style of teaching, Sri, where yeah. you just throw in some dad jokes in there <laughs> or relate, uh, you know, the subject topics to uh, real life scenarios you come across. And uh, I mean, the great life advice you just give. I think that sort of uh, connection with the student, it sort of uh, takes you back from just like studying and just focuses much more on like, you know, life in general. Sure. And okay. I think it's a great sort of, uh, yeah, I think it's a great sort of, you know, escape for students to like connect with their educators more. And I think it makes students look forward for the next classes because I sort of witnessed that uh, I've had some tutors who are pretty engaging yeah. and uh, I've seen like the participants grow every week. So I right. think, yeah, that, that could be nice to see more often. Sure. So you're saying that educators ought to try and bring more energy and more uh, excitement into what they're doing. And, and look, I agree. Uh, teaching and learning, you know, if especially the educators don't have that passion and that excitement, then the people who are receiving on the receiving end, whether it is online or offline, will actually kind of feed off that. So especially in an online environment, I also myself notice that if I'm not bringing my A game and my very best, then it's already downhill from the very start. Okay, so more engagement, more uh, real life kind of anecdotes, maybe the occasional lame dad jokes. All right. Anything else that, you know, that you have observed now, let's say, um, all of QUT turned all their attention to you and say, okay, Rowan, what would you like to see? Okay, something that you would want to share that you would go, you know what, I personally would love this. What would that be if you were to allowed to be selfish? Okay. Uh, damn, I really put me on the spot history. Uh, <laughs> well, you should know say... that by now. You should know that by now that I'm going to go <laughs> off script just a little but. This makes this makes it even more exciting when we can actually hear your raw thoughts. Yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, I I really have this uh, love and hate relationship with group work. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, group work is uh, it's a it's a pretty controversial topic. Yeah. Because uh, I do like working with people, but sometimes uh, I mean most of the time it just ends up being uh, one person working on uh, the project. Yeah. So yeah, I would uh, definitely try something else other than group work or try to sort of modify it in a way that uh, sort of includes every single person uh, to do their work. But yeah, no, I don't think I can really come up with anything else. No, because look, I think the QT, group work, yeah. No, no, the group work, I think let's, you know, let's touch on that briefly. So you're saying that, you, you know, like, look, in every unit we tell people, and this is standard, stock standard across QUT, that we inform our students, hey, you've got to work in groups. You've got to work with other people. That's just the way it goes, yeah? Some people are very fortunate to be able to work on their own, yeah? But even those people will eventually have to engage with others. So what if we were to take this notion of group work and we were to say, look, you know, we are going to define it even uh, in a greater to a greater uh, extent in the sense that every person is going to have a fixed role, maybe fixed set of responsibilities. So the um, the burden of getting the good grade doesn't just fall on everybody else. Uh, and, you know, so let's say I am slacking. We are in a group. I'm slacking and I still get a good grade because you did all the work. But rather, all of a sudden, what if particular members were then forced to or encouraged to contribute more and their grades depended on that. So if there was a better mechanism of maybe moderating group work, would that make it a bit easier? Yeah, definitely. I, I think so. But uh, 
I mean, I think one of one of my units, uh, more specifically, uh, they did have some sort of uh, mechanism to sort of make it mandatory that everyone does their work. But then, uh, yeah, sometimes I think uh, also looking at it from a group, different group members' perspective, I think people basically have their own struggles as well yeah. in terms of different other factors. So, yeah, I mean, I understand it in that sense. So it, it's really, I don't know, it's a, it's a two-way street, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, look, I think, um, I think you've shared some very important, valid points. And on one side, you would like educators to bring energy and passion and excitement, the real world, um, and really connect with the students so that the students are encouraged to keep coming back and uh, keep looking forward to, as you put it earlier. And as you rightly said, group work is a major struggle. But if there were better ways to not only help the students work together, but also make it um, engaging and exciting, considering the struggles of the individual members of a group, you would think that there's probably a better chance for group work to not be as controversial as you put it. Okay. Um, look, and one final thing, right? You are now in your second year, right? And um, I shared something yesterday or the other day, I should say, because I don't know when I'll put this up, maybe today, um, that what can we in the industry, what can we do to help students like yourself to better prepare you for a world that may be facing a different kind of challenge, maybe another pandemic in two, three, four years time? What can we do to better prepare you right now for that future? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I've been in uh, I've a bunch of peer programs as of now at uh, QUT. And I've had the sort of opportunity to like go for these workshops and they basically teach us how to you know, do online teaching and certain things like that, how to engage your audience. Mm -hmm. And I think being a part of those, uh, like sort of clubs and programs has given me this understanding that, uh, yeah, how I can sort of enter these kinds of situations and uh, how I can basically tackle certain things. And I think it's important that other students also get involved in those kinds of uh, programs to sort of, you know, better themselves and uh, get some self-development. Sure. So, yeah, I think also educators, I mean, you guys are doing a pretty great job through this pandemic. So, I mean, I can't really think of anything at the moment. All right. Now, look, I think building that extra skills, and you mentioned that right at the start that you actually took on video editing and so on and so forth. So would you say that um, us as professionals in the industry, as well as educators and people who are in the real world who are already working, could we then have those kind of things that kind of help you with the everyday stuff? So you're learning stuff in the university, but perhaps additional resources that are easy to consume that are out there and encouraging students and putting it out there uh, and making it freely available, perhaps, or low cost or no cost, if possible, so you're saying that that would help you better prepare for what is to come. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. All right. Oh, look, I, I think, um, you know, there's probably so much more we could talk about, but uh, we are also aware that we don't want to bore people to death and keep the conversation going on and on and on. So with that, I'm going to uh, thank you, Rowan, for, again, taking the time and for, you know, doing this because I, I, I believe that it is um, going to be a big help to at least one person out there. So thank you so much um, for doing this. Yeah, I mean, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to see where this goes. And yeah, uh, yeah I think you, you're a great interview as well. <laughs> no worries. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And I hope that this is helpful to you. And if you're interested in uh, doing this with me, having a conversation, uh, just uh, leave a comment and we'll take it from there. Thank you once again, Rowan, and everyone have a great day.